Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock 2 Studio and here is the speed up version of the live stream show from 8-29-2019. On this live stream show over at Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel, which is a different channel, um, Peg and I were working on mixed media greeting cards. I have a need for a large amount of thank you cards, so all of mine are thank you cards. I have pieces and parts that I keep in a plastic bin and then when I have time or inclination I work on them. This particular one I used an ATC on the front. Um, I did that in the green room before we started. I was just messing around. I also added a ribbon and um, a sentiment so it was kind of already partially done. It had been trimmed with some decorative scissors and things like that but um, if you have ATCs that are left over that you didn't trade or something, uh, you can always use them on a greeting card. You can just stick them on there as your focal point. It's really easy. Um, greeting cards are generally, the ones that I make, are half a sheet of 8.5 by 11 cardstock. And I cut it in half, either way, long or short, and then I fold it increase it with a bone folder and these this is the stack that I made before the show and then these are just pieces that I've trimmed down um, experiments demonstrations uh, just little bits and bobs that are around um, there's one that's from a envelope that somebody sent me just things that I think would be, make interesting pieces for something and I cut them down to uh, five and a quarter by four so that they fit inside the card easily and then these will fit into an A2 envelope which it that's the United States size I don't know what the European size is called but um, it is also called here in the United States an invitation envelope so just a real uh, you know you can pick the white ones up at the at the office supply store and they fit right in there perfectly so that second card that I just showed you, that one was already almost complete. Had a die cut on it and some different stuff. And all it needed was a sentiment. Sometimes I will make the cards and leave sentiments off because I can put them on later. So maybe it turns into a birthday card or a sympathy card or something that I might need in the future. Um, I know that I need a big stack of thank you cards right now. So I put so grateful on there, which is from a stamped um, I stamped a bunch of, of thank you sentiments and cut them apart, and I have a stack of those. So basically what I was doing today on the live stream was a lot of assembly. Um, some of the things had already been started. Some of the things weren't. Like this was just a uh, background of a bunch of die cuts that someone had sent me in Happy Mail. Sometimes I receive Happy Mail with a lot of little pre-cut out things, and I had put them on the card background and glued it onto a folded card but never finished it and I think it's been sitting around now for probably I don't know four years <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating that background's been around forever and so I just looked in my little bin of pieces that I have uh, cut out of magazines and little just stuff just I just have all these little pieces of things that I store and use when I'm doing a session like this so there's actually three different magazine pieces there. One of them is this strange drawing of a girl who has butterfly for hair. Then I also had this little skirt that I'd cut out at one point uh, for a different project and then didn't use it. And then I had this other, other piece that looked like a vintage jewelry, a picture of it. And I just used that as the kind of belt area. Put all that on with a permanent glue stick. And then I added a little scrap of tissue paper and a sentiment which I inked around the edges with black glued all that together and then all I did was just add a little tied piece of grosgrain ribbon um, in a knot just to kind of make it a little bit more balanced even though they're greeting cards you still need to think about composition it's just a small canvas so you need to think about the balance of things um, also, when you're using magazine images, die cuts, whatever type of thing, it's even though you think it's finished, 
it's really not. You still need to add your shading. You still need to add your highlights. Sometimes you need to add in extra colors. Um, in order for this, this one to blend in the background, I needed to put some of that magenta color around the edges and blend it. And I was doing that with the Fabric Castell Pit Artist Pin, which is an India ink in a pin, which means it dries permanent. And it's also a little bit blendable for a few seconds. So I was just blending it with my fingers. I also added a little bit of that purpley, pinky colors back inside to the image so that they appeared to go with the background because right now the image has got some pink on it, but then it's gray. Um, I also added black and white Posca pin outlines, highlights, things like that. And yeah, that stuff might seem a little bit time consuming, but it makes a huge difference. And it's, I really think that you should do it. Like here I am adding some pink shading to the face to make it a little bit more dimensional. And then I add some of that magenta -y, magenta y purple color to the hair as well. And then that just makes it blend all together better. And there you have it. That's the finished card. Finally, finally finished it. So this next one, I had glued a circle and a die cut um, over a stenciled image. I'm not sure when I made that background. I know it's, I'm pretty sure it is maybe spray over a stencil. That's what I think. I know, I recognize the stencil, so I know that it was somehow created. I'm not sure exactly when, but these are just the pieces that I have. And I had already glued that, that die cut alcohol um, ink piece and then the die cut fish on there, but had never finished it. So all I did was add, add some pin work and a little saying, some shadowing around the edge, some filling in of the die cut, because even though it's it seems like it's a finished image when it's a die cut, it's, still, it's not. It has holes in it. Um, it's got places that need to be highlighted or shadowed. So I always do that. So this was the same set of die cuts. I believe someone sent me the die cuts, probably die cut out of uh, maybe gel printed paper. They're intricate die cuts, and I know that I don't own them. So somebody sent them to me, and I glued them on backgrounds and then never finished the cards. So this one I decided to use a craft colored card. I put in kind of a celery green colored layer and then I thought I would use some burlap because it appears to be kind of a, a seaside type of a look with this stenciled background. Um, so the burlap I thought matched really well plus it's the same color as the craft. And then I added some olive colored shading around the edge using a distress crayon and blending that with a water brush and then proceeded to add in some more colors and pen work using the Fabric Castell Pit pins and my black and white Posca pin. Posca pins are an acrylic paint pin. They're my favorite. I recommend them. So if you're new to, to mixed media and you don't have any pins yet, I recommend the Posca pins. Awesome, awesome pins. Um, a link to my Amazon affiliate store is in below the video and you can click on that and the, there's Posca pins and all, all the different types of things that I like in the store. I'm not going to go through and do links on this video. I have some other things I need to do today that are more important than making a, a, a this <laughs> list of uh, links. That takes a long time. So I'm not going to do that today, but you can go over to my Amazon affiliate store and you will see all kinds of recommended products that I like to purchase on Amazon. And if you do that, it will help me out by giving me a few cents when you purchase something. So the background needed some help. So I decided to add in some black, um, very quick lines around where the stencil was just to make it 
more dimensional. I added a, a sentiment and then I grabbed a little set of seashell and sea star dies and I cut those because I just I needed something in the lower right corner and I just cut those out of scraps that were on my desk in my little bin and I actually found some that matched really well. <laughs> so I ended up using the two sizes of starfish and putting them down in the lower right hand corner of the card which finished it off, balanced the composition and um, made it look like maybe that the burlap was kind of the sandy bottom and then the sea turtle swimming around through the seaweed, which sea turtles would do. So, yeah. I used the die cut as a little stencil to add back in the dots. I thought those dots were going to come out on the die cut and they did not. So that's the first time I've used them, used those particular dies. So there you have it, a little, uh, sea turtle swimming around yeah this next one um i have several of these pieces of eight and a half by eleven that i made using stencils and also gel printing and then stenciling on the top and i'm not sure why i have so many of them left um but you know something like that that's sitting around you can just cut it into four pieces and now you have four backgrounds. So I glued one of them onto my folded white card. And then this piece that I glued on is a stamped image from a hand carved stamp that I made. And it's been sitting around, you know, in my box. So I glued it on there. I thought it went with the colors really well. Then I added in some uh, shading around the edge with the light blue. I added a couple different colors of olive to the inside to make it a little bit more dimensional looking and some pink and little yellow dots into the the cactus flowers at the top. And then all I did to finish it up was I had these stickers. These are from Tuesday morning and I bought them probably maybe a year ago or maybe longer. And so they're not sticky anymore. So I do need to glue them, but they're so cool because they have that kind of uh, iridescent glitter on them, which I really like. I actually, I think this might be my favorite card that I made today. I just really like, I like the letters and uh, it definitely, it was simple, but it definitely has an interesting background. It has an, it has an interesting foreground. So I like it. I think it's cool. I would like to receive this in the mail. And I will send it to someone special that I need to thank. So I just glued them down with tacky glue. I used the folded piece of paper to keep myself straight because I would be the one who would glue them on their crooked. <laughs> you know it would happen. I did add a little bit of shading around the letters um, with that same blue pen that I used around the cactus. And I did that a little bit in the corners too, just to to finish it up. But there you have it. I like it. <laughs> I should make some more like that with the I have more of those backgrounds still in the stack. So I don't know where those little carved stamps are, but I'm sure they're around somewhere. So this piece is a uh, a piece of Upo that has alcohol ink on it and I laid a stencil on there and then used alcohol ink over the top of the stencil and let it dry before I pulled the stencil off and that's how you get that image on there. Um, yeah, that's how you do it. You just drip alcohol ink all over the stencil and let it dry. So this one's real simple. All I did was add some organza ribbon and then I had, I die cut out the thank you with a thin die and I thought I was going to use the, you know, the part that says thank you, but then I liked the, um, the reverse, the, the leftover part of the stencil. So I glued that over the top of a piece of copper metallic paper and 
the picture of this one isn't pretty, isn't very good because it wasn't dry yet. <laughs> you could still see the glue. I took the picture too soon. But anyway, I cut that out, glued it on, and then I added some of this metallic thread in kind of a, a messy bow um, at the top just to add a little bit of more of that copper color, which is my favorite. <laughs> Love copper. Anything with copper is better. So yeah, you can see some of the glue still on there, but it doesn't look like that anymore. It came off. Or, you know, it dried. So uh, Then I was looking for another one. Um, I was showing some different alcohol ink ones that I had in the stack because I was talking about alcohol inks. And then this one is some sort of background that I made at some point, and I, I don't even know what it's from. I think it has a little bit of stenciling on it, but it's just a piece that I had. So this is a stamped image. Um, I did a, I've done a couple swaps where you exchange uh, stamped images that have been stamped in permanent ink on tissue, and then you can just glue those to anything, and when you glue it down, uh, it doesn't even show. You can't see the edges or anything. So I, gl I glued it down. It's a mermaid, obviously. And it wasn't a very clear stencil. Um, or I mean, not stencil. What am I talking about? My phone's dinging and it's distracting me. <laughs> it wasn't a very clearly stamped image. Like the, la the lady who I swapped it with didn't get quite get it inked up enough to make a nice clear image. So I end up using uh, my Posca pen and going around and drawing back in the lines where some of the lines were real faint and um, fixing it up that way. Does it look exactly the same as a stamp? Probably not because now I've added my own hand drawnness to it. <laughs> but uh, I also used the other part of the thank you that I had die cut in black. I glued that on there and then all I did with this one was I colored it in with the Faber-Castell pit pins that I had on the desk. You know, I colored the tail, the hair, all that type of stuff. And you'll see me do that. I hope that you've enjoyed this speed up video. If you would prefer to watch it in real time, you can go to the link below the video that goes over to the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel. And you can also then see what Peg did with her cards as well because we're both on the screen the whole time nowadays during the live show. So it'd be a re recorded version of the live show. You can also see the comments that people made. Um, if you liked this version, go ahead and leave it a th le give me a thumbs up <laughs> and you can leave a comment or question if you want to. That's helpful for my channel. Um, also, you can share it on Pinterest. You can um, subscribe that's very helpful. And if you do subscribe, turn on your notification bell so that you know when there's a new video that came out. Because how are you going to know? They don't always tell you. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you might be subscribed, but they still don't tell you there's a new video. So just click that little bell next to the subscribe and it will help you out to know when there's a new video. So I'm just finishing up this one. I'm coloring it in with some greens and some turquoise. I'm going to color her hair with some kind of orangey reds, which makes her look a little bit like the Little Mermaid. <laughs> I don't know why I picked those colors. Well, I don't. I do know why actually, because they were contrasting colors to all the blueness. Because orange and blue are really nice complementary colors. And that's the reason that I use the orange. And maybe that's the reason why the origin, original person who drew the Little Mermaid uh, used red hair as well. Because it was a complementary color. Maybe. I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> I also added highlights with my white Posca pin to finish it up. And that is it for card number eight. Um, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write notes in all these and mail them away very soon. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.